This is the O2 Jetta, subject of a previous video on installing a race pipe. And he's wanting a shifter like this. Shiny. I actually just installed one of these about a week ago on one of his friend's cars. I guess he liked what his friend had, so he wanted one too. So I'm going to do a video on it. It says there, off-road use only. This car only goes off-road. To start with, we want to pull this boot off. And i got my favorite trim tool here. don't think I really need it, though. This one fits tight. <laughs> this one, they usually have a metal clamp here. Uh, and somebody's put a uh, worm gear type clamp here. That makes it easy. So if those, this does have the stock uh, clamp on it, you could just work it loose, stick something inside of it, bend it back and forth till it works loose, and then cut it off. Um, I usually replace that with a plastic zip strip. It holds it just fine. see the screw down in here or not but there is a screw down in here this one's very rusted there it is okay after this screws gets taken out you have to work the ashtray area out this should have an ashtray in here that it's missing on this car obviously got the guy's a non-smoker but the ashtray's missing so I couldn't show you removing it but it just comes right out take this out you have to be careful because there's a metal rod that goes from one end to the other Top pops into some plastic parts that are pretty delicate so you don't want to bang the end of the cigarette lighter into it and break those plastic parts and that should leave us access to get to the two bolts inside here Removing the ashtray area gives us the access to the two bolts we need to pull the shifter out. That's one of them there, and that's the other one there. We need to pull this out also. That should be all we need to do from the inside. Axle boot grease shield keeps axle boot grease off the turbo. Exhaust mount bolts. Exhaust coupler bolts. It's not always that easy. Pause. 
There's three of these. Sometimes they're 12s and sometimes they're 13s. If you're in a northern state, you better heat these up before you go. We heat them a lot, but this car, this turbo has been replaced before. You don't heat them and they break, you got a real headache on your hands. One in the back, we're not going to be able to video. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Don't be afraid of the double wobble. It's pretty dark in there. That's right. Okay, this shield needs to come out here. These fasteners can just be pried off. Sometimes they break though because they get really rusty, especially if you're north in a northern. Bottom of the shifter. Pause that. In order to get this bottom cover off, you just pry these tabs back with a screwdriver or a pair of pliers. Just pry all those tabs. There's tabs all the way around it. And these two bolts on the bottom of the shifter are the last two bolts. Just give this one a drop. I'll pick them up in just a second. Up on my head. Pause. And I'm going to take this clip off here. Looks like this vehicle had a shifter bushing fail before because this isn't the stock shifter bushing down here. <clears throat> Normally that's part of the cable. So that is um, part of somebody's fix here. And the cable bushing has broken out. And this bushing is obviously some part of somebody's fix. And the other clip comes off the same way. See this one has the stock bushing in it. You can install this while it was hanging here, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out to make it easier to video. Probably make the whole job easier. The other clip comes out the same way. Pause. You have to remove this ball. Take this off. There are eight of these here.
This is a fairly difficult process. Has to, you have to hold your mouth just right to get it to come out. You have to move this all the way out. It won't come all the way out because of that. And then you have to get this to move sideways as much as possible. And then these springs hold it up. And the bushing has these little tits right here. Those go downwards. Let's do it that way. And once again, you gotta do this just right. It isn't easy, no fun. I might even have to ask for help. Luckily, I got somebody videoing for me today. doing down there is getting that in this area here because it was stuck on this side. And here I have the spring snagged right there. That spring needs to be below there. I'm going to have to take that back apart to get that spring in the right spot. Bummer. After you get this in, make sure that this spring is below this rubber. Uh, if it ends up on top of the rubber, you're going to fight and struggle with it for quite a while. So, get that in there. And then back up to get the rubber bushing on. Tits down. Spring's trying to work its way up of the rubber thing. There we go. This works in conjunction with this as a reverse lockout. So as you go over towards reverse, It locks it out, and so it'll only go in reverse if you pull up, and then it'll go in reverse. Uh, so there's a spring underneath here, and I think you put it on this way if you want no reverse lockout, 
So it just goes into reverse without having to uh, use the, lo the lockout feature. But if you put it this way, then it blocks it out of reverse and you have to lift up on this in order to get reverse. So here's my favorite trick for installing roll pins. You take a punch about the same size, put a vacuum hose on it, you put the roll pin in it, line up the hole nice, and then you can tap it in. Then you don't need the vacuum hose anymore. Yeah, I just drove it out the other side. This roll pin doesn't fit very tight. That moves way too easy. I'm going to put a drop of Loctite on it. I bet you I could pull that out with pliers. This roll pin fit really loose on the first install. So I put some gel on it, it's kind of like Loctite. all there is to it other than reinstallation I don't think I'm gonna video that Can you and to get these this bottom plate back on you just hammer those tabs back down and squeeze them down with pliers Okay, in order to get the shift boot off the knob to use on the new shifter, you uh, have this black ring here, and you can pry it off in here, but it's usually best just to pry it off out here. Go inside there, give it a little pry, it pops right off. And then the spring goes in, knob goes on, locked out of reverse, lift up on it, goes into reverse. Locked out, lift up, goes into reverse. I suppose if you wanted to, you could keep this boot above that area there to where the purple wouldn't be viewed. Then you just have to grab the handle through the leather in order to pull up on it. It works fine either way. So that's it. It's kind of a cool product. If you want to see more Volkswagen videos, give me a like and subscribe. Or visit my website at www.kansascitytdi.com.